Hey everybody, I'm Seth Fee for The Knife Center. I'm the other guy. And today we have a very special edition of Between Two Knives, where I ask the question, what's it going to take to get you into a new knife today? Sign up. Seth, sell me a knife. Let's give it a try. So, let me set this up here. Thomas is uh, very set in his ways, shall we say. Yeah. He's got his EDC worked out. He's, uh, it's been largely unchanged for months, if not years now. But uh, there's like, it's easier to measure the time by like how much a rock erodes, really. <laughs> so it's safe to say, Thomas, it takes a lot for Thomas to buy a new knife. Whereas me, All I, the time. yeah, I am constantly buying and trying new things. Um, because I am a chronic and, and hopelessly addicted knife person. Um, so today we thought it might be interesting to take a look at that kind of dynamic between the two of us. I've picked some knives here that I have bought, uh, many of which I still own, and I'm gonna try to convince Thomas that he should buy them too. And I'm gonna try and convince him he's wrong. He's gonna compare them against knives he already has to see how they fit in, if they do something different or better or worse. And knives that I think might be a better answer. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to admit I'm wrong sometimes. <laughs> the first one on the table is the Para 3 in Maximet. Uh, I've owned, at this point, geez, four Para 3s. Um, so obviously it's a knife that I like a lot and I recommend all the time. It's a great EDC choice. I think it is among the best USA made Spydercos you can get your hands on, period. And here in Maximet, it kind of represents an even better um, proposition, if you will. Yeah, the Para 3 is no stranger to this channel. It's, uh, it's a three inch knife, so you, know, you can carry it a lot of places. Mm -hmm. uh, you get that full handle, you get that compression lock, nice and finger safe. So it's, it's a good knife. I'll, I'm not gonna argue that. Yeah, you can appreciate the Para 3 for what I it can. is. I can. But you haven't purchased one. Haven't? Nope. No. And I think its natural competitor is the Benchmade Bug Out. So we've got here, uh, I've kind of kind of lined up the price brackets here. So this is the M390 Bug Out with aluminum handles. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it is pretty standard Bug Out fare. We've got the access lock that I am flubbing already. <laughs> So well, that one's new. They, they break might need a, a little bit. Might need a little breaking yeah. in. I do have my bug out, however. This was the Battle Wash exclusive that we carried uh, for a little while. Yeah, it's been it's been some time, uh, but it has served me pretty faithfully. Yeah. Yeah, and it has become my daily steak knife. So this is why I think you should buy a pair of three, and that is the upgraded blade steel. So on your bug out, which has S30V. Uh, it serves you well, but it's something mm -hmm. that you end up sharpening, I don't know, every couple months or so? Uh, every couple weeks. Every couple yeah, weeks. The ceramic plates really do a number. And um, Oh, that, when you actually use it as a steak I'm knife? I'm actually using it as a yeah. steak knife. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ceramic plates. Maximet steel uh, might be really one of the only things on the market that can hold an edge against constant, constant abrasive materials like that. A ceramic plate might stop it kind of slow. It's a very hard substance. But so. out of everything on the market, Maximet stands the best chance of holding up. Um, it is, it's a really exotic material. It's arguable whether or not it's even completely a steel. I mean, it is a steel, but the carbide count is so fantastically high in that alloy that it's almost bordering on the edge of just like cemented carbide. So it should do great on these weeds that are growing up here. <laughs> yeah. It is, uh, everything that's special about Maximet, you kind of have to be deep in the weeds of knife steel um, obsession to fully appreciate. Yeah. But what you will appreciate as a user is an edge that won't quit. Like, yeah. It's going to keep going and going and going through literal miles of cardboard mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, football fields worth of stakes. Yeah. <laughs> I, that sounds very appealing to me. <laughs> fields of stakes. 
Um, and that's why, you know, that's why the bug out's a natural competitor. You know, we do, we have this M390 version, uh, which is probably the closest in aesthetics to the, to the battle wash. Uh, but they also have an S90V version. Yeah. Actually have that one off camera right and here. Just bug out on bug out on bug out. Yeah. Triple bug out. Yeah. Uh, so bug out's a solid, uh, solid platform. Um, but these days being wiser, debatable. <laughs> I think the competitor to the pair of three is the MKM Yipper. Interesting. It's a Ben Peterson design. Um, and you don't have to pay any extra premium for the premium steel because by default, these come with magna cut steel. True. And they're a lot more affordable than either the premium bug outs or that Maximet Para 3 at just yeah. $139.90. Which I think is pretty close to standard Para 3 territory. Yeah. Yeah. Not far off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. MagnaCut doesn't have the edge retention of something like Maximet, but it's a great steel to live with day to day. Uh, I really appreciate the extreme stain resistance. Just being able to rinse off a knife and kind of put it away a little carelessly. It's, it's a nice peace of mind knowing that you're not going to come back to a rusty blade. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a reverse tanto. Very true. Yeah. The thing I also like about that pick, it's a bit of an unconventional comparison to the pair of three. I mean, it's not as chunky in the handle department, but the blade length is right under that three inches. So it's going to go kind of like the same places mm -hmm. that the pair of three can go. Yeah. And it's a little more discreet. We got the, and this blue handle, a little more polite society friendly, I should, I could say. Yeah. Okay. Nice pick. It kind of combines the bug out with the slightly smaller EDC proportions of the pair of three. Yeah. yeah. Cool choice. Cool choice. But you're not going to buy a pair of three. No. Because your bug out does what you want it, it to. It, yeah. It's already in my pocket. Okay. Okay. So we need to move on. Yes. <laughs> the second knife on the table, I'm going to challenge Thomas with is the Wii Vision. Uh, this is a knife that I very much like. Um, I think it's funky in the best ways. It has a really cool character. It has a uh, original lock that is fun to operate, um, very strong, designed to be easy to clean, and even kind of pops out of the handle here. Nice and easy to clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Made for maintenance. Uh, just, Which just a clever, clever design. Yeah, I can appreciate that. You know, you get some something stuck in there, some lint or something. Mm -hmm. Easy to clean it out on the fly. Um, but I wouldn't buy one. Oh yeah. Knowing what I know today, mm -hmm. I wouldn't buy one. Um, the pocket clip's a little weird for me. It's very weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a pricey fellow. Yeah, yeah. at two hundred sixty-three dollars with twenty CV steel. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of knife for the money, but you have something on the table that I yeah. must admit is a little it, bit more of a rational purchase. I would instead purchase the Civivi version. Yeah, the Civivi version. That's the all black at $78.20. Yeah. yeah, you're getting, uh, was it Nitro V steel? Yeah. Nitro V. Nitro mm -hmm. V, still good, still good steel. Uh, they fixed the pocket clip issue. Well, <laughs> some would say fixed. I'd say they did because it's reversible. <laughs> It is, it is. Cleanly reversible. It's an entirely ambidextrous knife. Not that that's a huge issue for me. That's right. The lock is ambidextrous and then with the reversible yeah. clip. Yeah. And and I'll grant you, it is a shape that doesn't raise too many eyebrows. It's not terribly tactical. Yeah, it's kind of like funky, a, a little modern. Santoku-esque yeah. blade shape. Yeah. Kitchen inspired, which I happen to like a lot. It's great for use on a cutting board. Um, I will, you know, a lot has been made of the pocket clip on this knife, and I agree with most of the criticisms, but I, I, I like this knife the way it is, and I wouldn't change it. I really appreciate that we committed to the vision of the vision. They followed through on Snex's original design. He, um, he wanted something that was not just reversible ambidextrous, but naturally ambidextrous, the kind of knife that you could pick up and use with your right hand and put in your right pocket and then pick up with your left hand and put in your left pocket without changing anything about the knife. And he succeeded in that and we we was true to that vision and, yeah. and that's cool. But I I I'll concede that yeah. it's a little it takes some getting used to, it's a little funky, 
And for most people, the Civivi is probably yeah. the more rational choice. But if I wanted something premium, that kind of funky shape, I already have my ZT. Ah. Uh, yeah. And my ZT55. Wow. Actually, these are more similar yeah. than, than I would have first yeah, thought. You don't have to go to the Wii Solid. You can look at the Wii, the Wii Vision. Yeah. Nice. So, so it's a solid vision. It's a solid knife. It's a solid knife. That's a solid knife, too. Yeah. And it's also a reverse tanto. True. And discontinued. And discontinued. I'm sorry it's discontinued. The Wii Solid is still available. Uh, that vision is available. Um, and I like, I just, I like that it didn't look immediately like a knife mm -hmm. sticking out of my pocket. Like, not quite sure what that is. And we had, and uh, I never really More used like a it. stealth bomber of a shape than a knife <laughs> shape. There's a little bit stealth fighter going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I liked having this point. I never actually used it, but I had that point there if I ever had to. Ah, a little, yes, little glass breaker yeah. tip. Yeah, this was never a tactical thing for me. Yeah. Well, you know what? Even though you didn't buy this knife, I do think the character of this knife, a, a, a knife with good character is an important part of any collection. And I think mm -hmm. the ZT checks that off for yeah. you. So I understand why you didn't get this. Yeah. The next knife, though, is from Protech. This is the CQC7A. I picked up one of these earlier this year, and they're now back in stock. $255 for this classic Emerson design with 20 CV blade steel, which is pretty cool. That's a new upgrade mm -hmm. for this model. Um, previously, these have been 154 CM. That's a nice jump up in edge retention you're getting there. And this is just a classic tactical utility design. Um, the, the handle is very neutral, but locks you in with a kind of dramatic sculpted type yeah. shape. Bit boxy. Yeah. But that's yeah. fine. You know, I wouldn't buy one though. <laughs> Why not? Because I already have a pair of two. Ah. Uh... <laughs> not this pair of two. This is the salt. Um, in fact, let's grab my actual pair of two. Oh. Another exclusive that I picked up. This was the Crew Card, uh, Crew Wear and Smooth G10. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more the more I hang on to this one, the more I'm convinced that G10 needs to be smooth. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone in the comments will, but I yeah. must admit I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, and I don't lose a lot of grip. You know, the, the Para 2 handle is still nice and grippy. I feel solid forward and back, up and down. It is kind of similar to the the ProTech handle in a lot of ways. You've got the same little belly mm -hmm. in the middle of the handle, the same little downturned tail there to uh, anchor it in the end of your grip. You know, a good design does end up converging to similar solutions, mm -hmm. and I think we have a bit of a case of that here. Yeah. And I think the the roots of this are a tactical knife, mm -hmm. but perfectly serviceable for EDC. Yeah, descended from the original military, which was designed specifically as you might guess, for uh, military end users. Not for flower engine. <laughs> you can use it that way, but yeah. The military was a dyed-in-the-wool tactical knife, as is the paramilitary too. But at this size, uh, brings it back down into more of an EDC. A little big, yeah, a little but... more. So, when, when you want a little more than the para 3. Yes. You know, this one's a little boxy too. Yeah. But the uh, boxiness means that you can really anchor it at a single angle. So a contoured handle is um, more comfortable to bear down on, but has a tendency to wiggle a little bit. The, the curvature of that scale can kind of, you know, scoop around in your hand slightly. Whereas the boxiness, sure, the edges might kind of bite back slightly, but man, they anchor in place. And on this salt version, it's very much intentional. I mean, look at the, not only do you have the grip of the peel mm. ply G10, but you have this milled pattern in here too for even more grip. Yeah, nice and grippy. I mean, it, uh, on the water, I'd certainly appreciate that, but day right. to day, yeah, I'll go with the smooth. Nice. If you didn't have that smooth G10, do you think this would be the pair two that you would get though? It might be. Um, with MagnaCut steel? I mean, Mag MagnaCut cool. is appealing, uh, but I might get either aftermarket handles or I might see if I can modify this a little bit. Mm. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So you're not getting the ProTech Emerson. I guess we need Nothing to wrong on. with it. Nothing wrong with it. Also, I'm still a little shy on autos. That's true. They yeah. only became legal here in Virginia yeah. 
what last uh, year rec recently. recently so the law did change you know regarding the carrying of autos but i'm still a little little gun shy on that i get that yeah. i get that there is always in the back of your mind the idea that there's a coiled spring ready to go in your pocket mm -hmm. Uh, some people may like that because it means that the knife's always ready to go. Yeah, and that's more than enough coil spring for me. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, I get it though. The pair of two, mm -hmm. it makes sense. I'm happy to live with both of my collection, but if I had to pick one, actually, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'd have to think on it, but mm. I, well, I have a lot of other spider coats. Yeah, too. lucky for you, you can just buy more knives. Yeah. Next up is a knife that I think represents. Maybe a, maybe a genuine gap in your collection. Could be. Which is something mini. Not just small, you know, around three inches, but an actual mini knife. This is the Civivi Baby Banter. And this version of it is our exclusive with upgraded S35 VN blade steel and uh, cool coral G10 handles. These are $87.50. And, you know, there's something about having a, a mini knife that is nice to put in your pocket every once in a while. Whether you're going to a place that has a uh, strict blade length requirement or you just want something ultralight for your gym shorts pockets or something where you don't want a big knife clanging around, um, I, I end up carrying my baby banter more often than I first thought, given its size. And with the finger twill on this version, you still get a good four finger grip on this thing to actually get some good work in. So the second Ben Peterson design we got on the table yeah, uh, true. after the, the yipper, mm -hmm. um, and each of us picked one. So the guy might know what he's doing there. And uh, it, it's a solid, uh, solid, solid hold. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you that, you know, pretty much four finger, about well, three and a half ish. Mm -hmm. uh, nice small blade when we, oh, we, yeah, we determined to to that. Yeah, we determined nice and under three inches. Um, I think it's a natural competitor though, is the CJRB Mylea. I can see it, especially in the matching kind of colorways you yeah. got there. Yeah. So the price on this is much more affordable. Uh, the Mylea actually more com competes with the base model baby banter. True, true. $37.95 and it has RPM9 blade steel, yeah. which is not going to give you the advantages of S35VN, but decent no, steel. It's still a respectable steel yeah. in its own right. Uh, we've got that full handle, and even if you're just going down to that that finger guard there, mm -hmm. I still got a, a solid three fingers, uh, and then I could throw a lanyard on the end if if I needed that extra bit of grip. I can choke up a little bit there. A little fingertip space. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a nice little utility blade, and it's a reverse tanto. True, which is yeah. important for you. Very important for me, clearly. So here's a question. <laughs> i got to this... type. <laughs> Does... For a knife this small, do you just not want to spend um, that extra money for the extra performance? I think that might be part of it. You know, I still got that in my head of like small means small dollar. I can see that. I can see yeah. that. I would argue though that on a small knife blade, you actually do want upgraded steel because there's less edge to work with. Mm -hmm. So you want that edge to last as long yeah. as possible. And that's an argument I've made as well. So I'm walking hypocrite. Um, <laughs> thing is, I had a more polite, smaller, discreet thing mm -hmm. in my Leatherman Skeletal. This actual one, this actual one, um, this, this blade uh, is not stock. This was in aftermarket uh, Alabama Damascus that um, clearly was handmade. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of play yeah, there. A little slop in that, but yeah. it's also been a tool you used for and years, right? And abused, and quite abused. Uh, the carabiner's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I lost one of the bit drivers, but for the most part, it's still, still pretty solid. And I used this daily in conjunction with my first pocket fix blade. <laughs> <laughs> Back at your old job? Back at my old job bartending, and this was actually an excellent combination because here's your pry bar in addition to a bottle opener. Uh, I could also, if I had to pull something tight, some kind of string or rope, I'd wrap it around here. And that was a nice pull handle. Okay, interesting. And then- Multi-tool. And then there were some, there were some little cans of pineapple juice that we had behind the bar mm -hmm. for cocktails. And they had these tiny little opening tabs that I couldn't get this under without breaking the tab, but I could wedge 
this section in there and actually perfectly pry it open every time hmm. without destroying my fingernails. Nice. Isn't that great when you find a new use for a tool you're already carrying? Yeah. It's, it's so satisfying. Um, but I wouldn't get this exact skeletal tool again. Okay. Or the one in front. Um, I'd actually get the Leatherman Skeletal CX. Oh, with the upgraded blade. With the upgraded 154CM steel blade, and it's entirely plain edged. So, and it's about 90 bucks, which is pretty close to that baby banter in price. True. Yeah. You're, you know, it's not S35, but it is an upgraded blade steel. You get a lot more functionality out of it. That's true. I, this answer didn't make sense to me at first, but I'm beginning to see where you're coming from because yes, the Skeletool is not a direct competitor to the Baby Banter. Mm -hmm. They are very different types of tools, carry, etc. But I could, I do see them working in a lot of the same places. Mm -hmm. Like the Baby Banter is something unintimidating, something that is, um, it, it doesn't feel like you're pulling out uh, a weapon in front of people. The Leatherman has that exact same sort yeah. of feel. Um, Multi-tools often get a pass Yeah, from most people. Yeah. I, I could see those kind of working yeah. in the same places. And I, I'll give you that the Skeletool offers a lot of extra functionality too. So did I just sell you a knife? Well, I already have probably more Leathermans than I need too. <laughs> <laughs> but that one I might have to hand to you. The, mm. the Skeletool is just undeniably a great tool. Yeah. You know, I think the reason I don't own a Skeletool yet is one thing that I think a lot of people probably like about it, which is the asymmetry of it. It's never made sense to my grip. I always feel like I'm holding it incorrectly. It's probably a person-to-person -person thing. Yeah. So, that's yeah. just me. Maybe I'll get a... Can I get a personal pass here, Thomas? Yeah. Okay. I think you'd get used to it, though. Probably. Yeah. I would enjoy finding new uses for all these tools and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Leathermans are great. I even once I worked at a job where uh, we had we had to assemble these giant projection screens and mm -hmm. you had to stretch the screen over the frame by hand and you're like holding that much at a time but mm. you're having to pull like 30, 40 pounds of force. I figured out I could use the pocket clip to kind of nudge it over that last hump. Huh, nice. So. Sounds like what you need is a parcel hook on a Vis Victorinox tool. You know, maybe. Wow. Okay. The next one on the table is the other, to my mind, kind of gap in your collection. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal. And it might be. But <laughs> you don't have a true bruiser folder. Um, this is the AD10. This is probably my personal favorite of the uh, triad lock, ultra strong, oversized kind of uh, folding brutes. This one is uh, $129 with S35 VN steel. Andrew Demko design. Man, this thing is so comfortable. The blade cuts a lot better than it has any right to given how chunky the blade stock is. Just got a good grind, good wide blade for slicing. Ah, man. Smooth yeah. handle. It's got that smooth, ten, smooth G10 have, that you like. It does have some nice smooth G10. Mm -hmm. And I'll concede you probably stumped me on this one. Darn near. I'm not 100% confident in what I've got to answer for. Okay. Um, generally speaking, if I needed something hard to use, I was grabbing my ZT. True. Yeah. The, it's a hard use, but frame locks don't mm -hmm. measure up to the strength yeah. of a triangle. And, and I, I bought into the, the tagline, you overbuilt. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of is. Um, but I think its natural enemy is the SOG Seal XR. That's a cool choice. Yeah, so S35 steel again, pretty close on the blade size. Also a drop point, this does come in a plain, serrate, uh, plain edge blade as well. And SOG kind of like, I started, I got here right as SOG launched their XR lock. That's right, yeah. And it kind of had me enamored for a little while as the improvement over the axis lock. I could see that. So this. This is not a knife that you bought, but one that you seriously considered, I right? did consider. Yeah. Yeah, I figured it would work nicely with my ZT, but now I'm looking back and like it probably would have to work. Instead of? Uh, instead of, mm -hmm. yeah. There weren't, wasn't quite room in my pocket for both of these. That's a big knife. That is the, the thing about these, these bruiser yeah. folders. They are big knife, big knives. Yeah. Uh, if you have one in your pocket, it's kind of hard to put anything else in there. Yeah. 
Um, so I didn't get one of these, but I must correct you. I do kind of have a big bruiser. Okay. It's just not a folder. It lives in my garage. It's uh, the Cold Steel Chaos Cooper. <laughs> a Cold Steel too. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so Cold Steel and Cold Steel. Um, this has recently, more recently been splitting firewood. Nice. You know, this, this and a rubber mallet actually, you know, does the job pretty oh, well. Oh yeah, that'd, that'd yeah. get the job done. I destroyed the rubber mallet. <laughs> Cold <laughs> Steel I, won. But I had fun. Nice. I had fun doing it. And this is, they don't make the uh, Chaos Kukri anymore, unfortunately, uh, but they do make plenty of big bruising fixed blades. Yeah. Yeah, SK5 Steel is one of their... Uh, hallmarks of their fixed blade yeah. series. Tough carbon steel. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, and it's honestly, this is more. I, this more ended up in my garage because this was a demonstrator we were messing with for some videos. Oh, that's right. Including when I cooked a steak dinner with it. Oh yeah, that's a really fun video if you haven't yeah. seen that. So, I have a big bruiser. Okay. Okay. You know, as much as I hate to admit it. When you carry this knife and use it for those hard use tasks, you're kind of just using it instead of a fixed blade yeah. anyway. Um, yeah. the, I mean, these are not directly comparable. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they are not. No, no, no. The fun of these knives is that they offer you a, a good portion of the strength of a fixed blade, but mm -hmm. something that folds yeah. and fits in your pocket. I wouldn't feel bad using it hard though. No. No, I've put my 8010 through some rigorous testing, shall we say. It's come out looking great on the other side. I mean, the triad lock is designed to withstand stress and wear over time. So even if it gets kind of um, knocked out of alignment slightly, there's built-in tolerances around all these parts specifically made to reset the lock geometry so that it continues to lock up safely um, even as the lock wears Really cool design, um, yeah. I think you should at least get a, a triad lock in your collection. Possibly. I, I'm pretty sure I don't, also don't have a back lock. Oh, that, that could check mm. two boxes yeah, for you. That could. But I, the, the Cold Steel Kukri, I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you're going hard, that's a good one to do this it with. Fun. I like this for yard work too. Yeah. It's too heavy for yard work, but I don't care. That's the cool thing about tools like that, I mean, they may not always be optimized perfectly for the job, mm -hmm. but they're so fun to use that you're going to want to use yeah. them for that job. And then the neighbors ask questions, <laughs> which is nice. I get to meet them. Bring them into the fold. Yeah. The last knife is actually one that we agree on. Yeah. We were talking about this and we realized that recently we we both picked up um, David's new design, the yep. Pocket Tango. Yep. So. It's interesting to come to the end of this video and, and find something that we have both kind of agreed on. Uh, the Pocket Tango, this is uh, the exclusive sheep's foot design. This is the reverse Tanto. $169, Magna Cut Steel, made in Italy. Why did you pick up a Pocket Tango, other than just being David's Other friend? than just being, you know, helping David out mm -hmm. uh, with his sales figures. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I didn't have a Pocket Fixed Blade yet. Yeah. And kudos to David, he did figure it out pretty darn well. This is a nice, comfortable, it, you know, it can kind of be the bruiser. Mm -hmm. you know, so it has I'm, the strength of a fixed blade. So I'm contesting more. this is the substitute for the 8010. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> the strength is probably well matched. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, full tang, <laughs> but still nice and, nice and comfortable mm -hmm. with, the, with these contoured handles. And this was the, the prices on these aren't bad either. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the whole package together, I mean, the knife is fantastic and the sheath makes it really easy to give pocket fixed plates a chance. Yeah. It's a growing kind of category of EDC knife as I see it. And I, I, I hope that this knife has convinced a lot more people to give it a try mm -hmm. because it, it is kind of a unique combination of features. You do get the strength of a fixed blade, which is on par with something crazy like this 8010. But being small enough and deft enough to work more like one of these, you know, genuine uh, pocket knives. Yeah. It's, it's a cool new category and this is about the best expression of yeah. that, that style that I've seen. Yeah. The other, the other advantage to this is uh, if I need to pull it out for anything, uh, I'm not making a noise. 
True. Yeah, usually the leather I'm, sheet's very quiet. Usually I'm in the kitchen and I pull out a knife because I need to cut something and my wife in the next room just hears, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. See, as soon as I take out my knife, I'm, I'm usually opening and closing it, opening and closing, opening yes, and closing. Are. Making a whole lot more noise than I need to. I'll still do that watching TV though. Yeah. You can't fidget with a fixed blade quite the same way. Mm, I can with the sheath though. Oh, there we go. I play. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just way too enamored with that. Knife finds a way, doesn't Knife it? Knife finds a way. <laughs> well, I guess I didn't convince you to buy anything, but I think you've made a pretty good case that you have everything covered in terms of what these knives could do for you. You already have them kind of being done. I'd say I'm definitely in a better shape than I was when I first started working here. That's true. It's true. Despite your best efforts, you still have kind of managed to rack up a bit of a collection. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Not my fault. Well, if you agree that any of these knives are worth buying, um, we'd love to hear which ones were your favorite. If Thomas convinced you of uh, anything you should or shouldn't pick up. I think everyone should have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to get any of these knives, Click the links in the description to head to knifecenter.com. And remember that uh, you'll rack up some points, some Knife Center rewards points to spend on your next purchase. And with that, I've been Seth V for the Knife Center. I'm the other guy. And we got Gary behind the camera today. Thanks, Gary. There's so many people got to pick up my slack. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.